2017 was a fantastic year for the Nintendo. 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 Can't even get my damn intro right. Ah. Like I was saying, 2017 has been a fantastic year for the Nintendo Switch. Honestly, with so many incredible games released in the first year, like Breath of the Wild, Super Mario Odyssey, Splatoon 2, Xenoblade Chronicles 2, Pokémon DX, Mario Kart 8 Deluxe, there are so many titles to pick from. Everyone can find something that they love to play on the Switch. And that's the incredible thing. It's just the first year. 2018 is just starting. With that first year coming on, I'm really looking forward to seeing what the Switch still has in store for us. That's why today we're going to be looking at some of my most anticipated Switch games for 2018. Now this is not my top 10 best Nintendo Switch games of 2018. These are just some of the games that for whatever reason I'm really looking forward to playing. Alright, and in no particular order, let's go ahead and get started with this list. The first game I'm really looking forward to this year is Kirby Star Allies. Now, I haven't played the Kirby series in a long time, it's been quite a while. I think the last one I played was probably for the NES. I think the thing that looks so appealing about this game is that it looks like the Kirby games that I grew up with back in the 90s. It's got that look of returning to a traditional Kirby game, which is really exciting. The game also looks very bright and fun. I think one of the other really cool things is not only can you use Kirby's signature inhale to copy enemies' abilities, but in this new game you can also combine abilities to create new ones. The game looks very bright and colorful, super inviting for both kids and adults. It's now also featuring four-player co-op on the Switch, which means you can play with your friends in the same room. Everyone's favorite pink blob is coming to the Switch on March 16th. This next game on the list people have not stopped talking about, and that game is The World Ends With You Final Remix. The World Ends With You is a game that originally released for the Nintendo DS. It's one that I never got to play. I had actually never even heard of it until the trailer released, and then BOOM! My Twitter blew up over this game. It's made by Squirt Enix, so it looks a little reminiscent of the Kingdom Hearts games. The game centers around a boy named Neku in the Shibuya district of Tokyo. He soon discovers that he is to be erased from existence. He allies himself with different partners to complete a series of difficult and complicated tasks to prevent himself from being erased. I think one of the reasons this game looks so interesting is because of its design. It looks like a lot of time went into it. It's got this really cool, stylized urban fantasy JRPG look that Square Enix has put into it, and it's kind of appealing. Everything just really like stands out to you. It's also got a really interesting style of gameplay that is mixed between using the control buttons and creating different motions on the touchscreen depending on which character you're controlling in battle. And since the game is being ported from the Nintendo DS to the Nintendo Switch, they're actually creating a new control system that allows for use of the touchscreen and the Joy-Cons. The game's gonna release in 2018 later this year, which I'm honestly really excited for. It's one of those games that's very highly acclaimed, it's a fan favorite, somehow I just missed it, so I will definitely be picking this up on the Switch later this year. This next game on the list is definitely one that caught my eye, and that is Project Octopath Traveler. It's a turn-based JRPG that is being developed. So far they're using a working title and they've released a demo for the game. The premise of the game is that the player can control one of eight characters, each with a different background and objective, that allows them to choose how they want to proceed with different scenarios in the story. Each character has a different skill that can lead to different outcomes depending on how you use them. This is very interesting because the game allows you to choose how you want to play. The game honestly looks stunning. It has this beautiful 2D, 3D mix for the backgrounds that gives the game an older feel, kind of reminiscent of the early Final Fantasy and Tales games, while still playing like a game in 2018, which is honestly extremely appealing. Honestly, the game looks breathtaking. Even with the muted colors, they still find a way to make the game look very bright and engaging. The combat looks fun, the landscapes look beautiful, and I'm very interested in seeing how controlling eight different characters is going to make the story play out. Like I said so far, it's a working title, they've only released a demo, but the game is scheduled to release later this year. Definitely one to pick up. The next game on this list is one that we really don't know a lot about. So far all we have is a teaser trailer, which doesn't really reveal much, except that we'll be getting Bayonetta 3 for the Nintendo Switch later this year. Now for me, Bayonetta is a weird one on this list. I hadn't even heard of the games until I saw Bayonetta as a character for Smash Bros. on the Wii U. The games are darker with more mature themes, but an interesting plot. The combat honestly looks really fun, which is one of the main appeals for this game. There's really cool weapons, great looking combos, Plus, Bayonetta has her signature time-warping abilities. Also, it has been confirmed that Bayonetta 1 and 2 are both coming to the Switch on February 16th, meaning that for the first time we get all three games on one system. So if you haven't had a chance to pick up Bayonetta 1 or 2 yet, you can go ahead and play those, or if you've already played them, you can go ahead and pick up Bayonetta 3. They're all available on the Switch. This next one on the list is a pair of games that I'm actually really excited for. The first game is Monster Boy and the Cursed Kingdom. It's an open world slash platformer with a really bright and inviting atmosphere. 
game's bright use of color and cartoonish animation is really charming. You play as Jin, a boy who can transform into six different animals with unique traits and abilities to help him advance through the game and defeat his nefarious uncle. The game is a spiritual successor to Wonder Boy 3 The Dragon's Trap, which is our second game, which was released on the Nintendo Switch eShop. However, that game is getting a physical release, meaning you can have hard copies of both games. The games look bright and cheerful, really easy to pick up and play. They also both have really likable art and animation sequences. Having not played Wonder Boy yet, I'm really looking forward to getting the hard copy along with Monster Boy. Both games are getting physical releases this year. Now for those of you who don't know, I am a huge fan of the Fire Emblem games. It's a series that I grew up with, I've been playing them for years. They're honestly really fun, super exciting to play, and it is confirmed that we are getting a Fire Emblem game for the Nintendo Switch later this year. However, we know nothing about it. The only thing that has been confirmed is that it is a Fire Emblem game and it is releasing this year. Other than that, we really don't have anything to go on. The only thing we do know is that this game is going to be a return to traditional Fire Emblem, not at all like the side game Fire Emblem Warriors or the mobile game Fire Emblem Heroes. Being a fan of the Fire Emblem series for so long, I can say that I am super excited. The games were a huge part of my childhood. I've played every single one released in the US, and one that was only even released in Japan. The games are very fun, with turn-based strategy combat and one of the only games that includes permadeath. Meaning that once your character dies, they're gone forever. Of course, some of the newer games have toned this down a bit, adding a casual mode so that characters can come back to life once the battle has ended. The games offer a variety of different fun characters, each with their own class. Meaning that you can choose how you want to play. You can pick a horse riding paladin, or a magic wielding sage. Or you can just be a weeb and play with whoever you think is cute. The older handheld games have such charm, they hold up well even today. Art style is beautiful, the music is beautiful, and they haven't had a non-handheld console game in quite a while. Not since Path of Radiance for the GameCube and Radiant Dawn for the Wii, which are also really great games, you should check them out. I think one of the most exciting things about Fire Emblem coming to the Switch is that with the, for the first time, we are finally going to be able to play the game both on a console and a handheld at the same time. I'm honestly super excited, I can't even wait for this one. Fire Emblem 2018, Nintendo Switch, it's coming. Moving on from that, we have Super Meat Boy Forever. It's a sequel to a game released in 2010 and was originally only planned to be a mobile game. The game features Meat Boy and Bandage Girl, a couple of characters looking to rescue their baby Nugget from Dr. Fetus. The game has a really simple premise, it's a fun platformer. You play as this meat blob, trying to get from one end of the level to the other. The only problem is, the game's freaking hard. The game requires really precise movement and control, testing the player's skill in order to avoid dying a bloody death. Hard as it may be, the game is damn good fun. And in order to make things a little bit easier for newer players, this game has a new feature. The game randomly generates levels based on the player's skill, meaning that the game can be easier or harder depending on how good you are. Either way, the game is a really fun way to pass the time, especially with friends. You can enjoy taking turns with each other, placing bets, trying to avoid dying. The game is honestly one that's just pure fun. Next game on the list is kind of my cheat one. It's one that has already been released. Night in the Woods is a game that released on February 1st for the Switch, but I haven't played it yet and it honestly looks so fun that I had to put it on the list. Sorry, Night in the Woods is an indie adventure game where you play as May, a cat who has dropped out of college and is coming back to her small dying hometown. The game is unique because it's more of a sensory experience, focusing more on narrative than it does on gameplay. The game lets you explore, make observations and experiences, and tries to make you feel what the characters are feeling. The game covers themes like mental illness and depression. That makes this game different than the other ones on this list, but it's still one that I want to experience. The game has a fantastic art style, which is honestly one of the reasons why I want to pick it up. The soundtrack is also great. It almost makes me think of an old Flash game more than a classic gaming experience. Like I said, the good thing about this game is that it's already out. It released on February 1st. It's a good buy. It's only $20 on the Switch, which I think is a steal. I mean, 20 bucks. That's amazing. Definitely picking it up the next time I have another $20 lying around. But this next game is a little different. It's one that I think no one was really expecting. Dark Souls Remastered for the Nintendo Switch. Now, I own this game for the PS3. I was in a GameStop, I saw it in the used section, I picked it up for like five or six bucks, and I just never played it. I don't really have a reason why. The game looks like a lot of fun, I'm really into open world games, I'm really into fantasy games. It's just one that I never devoted the time to. But now that I know it's coming to the Nintendo Switch, I'm glad that I didn't because I'll get to experience the game remastered. Not only that, but it also kind of makes you excited to see if they're gonna release the other Dark Souls games in the future. I've heard the game is extraordinarily hard, very unforgiving. But I've been playing video games for a long time. I think I will be okay. Basically, this is one of the more difficult games to play on this list to play if you are looking for a challenge. 
Remastered means it's going to look even better than before with updated graphics. Not only that, but Dark Souls relies on online play, where characters can either help or hurt each other throughout the game. Meaning that this is a great opportunity for the Switch to expand on its online features, something it's been lacking in. Like I said, if you're into fantasy games, if you're into open world games, if you're looking for a little bit of a challenge, Dark Souls Remastered is releasing May 25th. Next on the list is a series that I had almost forgotten about. Despite being a fan favorite, it really hasn't seen the limelight in quite a few years. That is the Mega Man series. Mega Man is a longtime favorite, especially of classic retro gamers. Mega Man had fallen off the grid for quite a few years until coming in as a character for Super Smash Bros. for the Wii U. However, later this year we are getting Mega Man 11, which is the first Mega Man game in over 8 years. Honestly, I haven't played a Mega Man game in a long time. I think the last one I played was Mega Man 4 for the NES. That was way back. And the last thing I even remember seeing of Mega Man before Super Smash Bros was the Mega Man Battle Network series, which was a cartoon for Saturday mornings back in the early 2000s. Mega Man 11 is coming with a brand new art style which we've never seen in a Mega Man game before. It looks much more modern and even has a 3D effect. Whether or not this is a good thing, I'm going to leave to the long time Mega Man fans to debate, but I do think it's a very good thing for the series to be getting some love after being gone for so long. Also something fantastic Nintendo is doing, not only are we getting Mega Man 11 for the Switch later this year, but we are also getting the entire series in a trio of games. The Mega Man Legacy Collection is games 1 through 6, the Mega Man Legacy Collection 2 is games 7 through 10, and we are also getting an entire Mega Man X series including all of those games, all of which are coming to the Switch. That means that for the first time we are going to have every single Mega Man game ever released all on one system, which is amazing for longtime Mega Man fans and also for anyone who's never played Mega Man before and wants an excuse to get into the series. Those are all coming out later this year. Anyways guys, that's about it for my most anticipated games for the Nintendo Switch of 2018. Honestly, the Switch had such an amazing first year and is already looking to have such an amazing second year. I can't wait to see what we have in store after this. If you enjoyed this video, leave a like. Go ahead and let me know what games you're looking forward to this year in the comments. Let me know if you agree or disagree with my opinions. And shameless plug. And please, if you want to see anything more about me, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. If you guys are interested in seeing a little bit more about the channel or about my personal life, you can go ahead and follow me over on Twitter. I'm on it pretty much all the time. It's also the best place to message me. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. I'm trying really hard to put out a lot of great content you guys this year. I hope you all have a fantastic 2018. Have a good one guys. Bye.